Well, let's follow up on some of the concerns from the Alberta Premier, who is in Ottawa today to express those concerns. From the foyer of the Commons tonight, I'm joined by Randy Bosno, an Alberta Liberal MP, Shannon Stubbs, Natural Resources critic for the official opposition, and Daniel Blake, he is the critic for Western Economic Diversification for the NDP. Thank you all for taking time to speak with me. The House will hold an emergency debate uh, on this tonight, Mr. Bosno, on uh, the oil and gas crisis in Alberta. Uh, first of all, do you believe there is an oil and gas crisis in the province of Alberta? Well, what I believe is that uh, we have 99% of Alberta oil that's trapped here, and that uh, after 10 years of Conservative government, still 99%. So we are working and focused every day to make sure that we can get to non-U.S. markets, and that's why Minister Sohi has been meeting with First Nations uh, groups this week. The federal court was very clear in what we have to do to expand TMX. Uh, the differential is a real problem. Uh, my dad and brother both worked up in Fort McMurray in the oil sands, and I know what it's like to get a $45, $50 haircut on every barrel of oil that leaves Alberta to uh, one market, and it has to stop. The reality, though, Peter, is it's very complicated. It has to deal with, um, we have to deal with um, the fact that two refineries in the U.S. have been offline since October and November. They're now back online, 900,000 barrels. Peter, there's no government that's more seized with this issue than ours. Okay. We invested $4.5 billion in buying the asset so we can double the line and triple the flow of uh, oil through the pipeline. All right, Shannon Stubbs, the, 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 the Premier of Alberta made a, a, a pretty straightforward ask today. She's going to buy new, uh, more rail cars to try and get the oil to market in the absence of, uh, of, uh, of the pipeline expansion. Um, but so far, the federal government hasn't committed to help, and, and she suggests... So far, the government doesn't seem interested. Is that a failing as far as you're concerned? That is exactly what Albertans from every corner of the province say loud and clear, including the over 2,000 Albertans who gathered in the streets of Calgary last week uh, when the Prime Minister was there to just simply talk about his emotions and understanding the frustration and the anxiety of Albertans, but offering no concrete solutions whatsoever. The Liberals had an opportunity to take concrete measures to address the crisis in the oil and gas sector, which the Prime Minister himself last week admitted is a crisis, but they offered nothing whatsoever by way of solutions to uh, to restore confidence in the in the energy sector and to ensure that pipelines can be built. And to Randy's point, what is very important, uh, I think, for Canadians to understand is that two standalone pipelines, the only options for new markets, one, the Northern Gateway to the Asia Pacific, and second, the Energy East Pipeline, which would have secured Canadian energy independence and allowed for exports to Europe have been killed under the Liberals' watch. The Prime Minister, instead of adding consultations with Indigenous communities and setting the conditions to ensure that the Northern Gateway Pipeline could go ahead, uh, deliberately and unilaterally vetoed that proposal. And then the Liberals' intervention, delays and interference in the regulatory approval process changing the rules as it went along, which TransCanada warned a month earlier might force them to abandon the Energy okay, East project, me, is what killed that. And on the Trans Mountain okay, expansion, no, no, on, the on the Trans Mountain not expansion, true. to be clear, be, 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 the Liberals promised legislation in the spring to enforce uh, federal jurisdiction on that pipeline. They failed. They promised the $4.5 billion purchase of the pipeline would put shovels in the ground in the last, uh, in, in the summer. They failed. They okay. said the carbon right. tax okay, would no, okay. ensure the okay. Trans Mountain okay. Let me get move. I'm moving. And they've chosen the longest possible okay, option. Chance, there is no Mr. start date. Okay, Mr. Blakey, let me have you get a chance to get on the conversation here. The, do you think the federal government ought to pony up some money and share the cost of new rail cars with Alberta to move this oil to market? Well, I think, uh, you know, first of all, I just want to say, I mean, I don't, you know, we're, we're concerned about what's been happening in, in Oshawa. We're just as concerned about what's happening in, in uh, Alberta. You know, we, we want to see Canadian workers be able to get decent jobs that pay well, that... Um, that uh, support their families. I mean, I do think one of the one of the things that's been lost because the pipeline debate monopolizes so much of the so, so, so much of the oxygen when we talk about energy is you know one of the one of the principal barriers to building new refinery refining capacity in Canada was was the capital outlay. The government dropped 4.5 billion dollars buying an existing pipeline, not the new pipeline. They need, they need many more billions of dollars in order to actually add pipeline capacity to, to Trans Mountain. But what we're hearing from companies that have more refining capacity here in Canada is that they're not ex as exposed to this price differential. Um, but, that, but that refining also means good, good quality value-added jobs here in Canada. So part of the problem around energy right now is that, it's, is that the conversation has been 
stunted because it's been monopolized by the debate over whether we build more pipelines or not. Adding refining capacity here in Canada, if the government's willing to put billions of dollars into the industry, ought to have been part of the conversation because okay. uh, that would have brought value-added jobs here, here to Canada and provided some insulation against this price but right now, Right now, Mr. Boss, no, the, the, the Premier of Alberta has got a, a, very, a very direct ask and that, you know, Alberta shipped 270... 270,000 barrels a day by rail in September, and it needs to. If she wants to buy new rail cars to ship. I think it's another 125,000 barrels a day on top of that. Her ask of the government is clear: share the, you know, help us pay for the cost of new rail cars. Why is the government not jumping on that? So, Peter, those barrels of oil go right by my riding on the CN Rail in my riding of Edmonton Centre, and we're looking at all the options. But let's be clear: but she's saying she, she has, she's not hearing from the finance minister or the prime minister about whether they'll help. But for these new rail cars. It's also Minister Garneau's issue. This is not an immediate fix. This solution wouldn't come online for another year. Line 3, as soon as it's activated, is going to take a lot of pressure off of getting product out of Alberta and will cause those prices to rise. So will TMX. But let's actually look at what the rail car issue is. What they're actually asking us to do is step in and play referees to an issue when one company bought most of the capacity on the rail to the disadvantage of the other companies. That's not a government call. That is business doing business and if you scoop your competitors, is that all of a sudden now the responsibility of government? It's not an easy fix. Nothing to do with the differential is an easy fix. That's why we're focused on the biggest issue that will help the differential, which is getting TMX done in the right way so that we can get our product to Asian markets and get past West Canada Select okay. to an actual world price. So, Shannon, so the answer, Shannon Stubbs, is, look, help is, help is on the way, but it's, it, it's coming the way the government wants to do it by way of trying to get this pipeline expanded whenever that happens. Right, and exactly, and to your point, the reality is that there is no start date yet for the beginning of construction for the Trans Mountain expansion, the majority of which, of course, will still go into U.S. refineries and, and uh, expanding a little bit to, to the Asia-Pacific, which is why the East to West pipeline and other export pipelines to the West Coast are so important. But what's also equally alarming is that, uh, you know, the, the province of Alberta, but along with four other provinces and one widespread consensus in the private sector is that the Liberals' no more pipelines, Bill C-69, will make it so no new pipeline is ever built or proposed Not in true. Canada again. And yet they're forging ahead to ram this through the Senate, reject, having rejected hundreds of amendments from all parties. That is why Albertans in every corner of the province don't believe the empty words and the rhetoric of the Liberals when they constantly say one thing out of one side of their mouth, but they're layering on of red tape and added costs and new legislation interference in the regulatory system is exactly what has driven out more energy investment from Canada than at any other time period in the last seven decades. Mr. Blakey, some? LNG. Mr. Blakey, some, some uh, and I, I know you're from Manitoba, but some, some Albertans feel that, you know, there's a, there's a different narrative here. We've seen the government spring into action for, uh, for what's happening in Oshawa, at least trying to work very quickly to try and develop some sort of a plan for, for workers there and maybe even to try to find a way to save that plant. Is it, are, is it treating Oshawa and Ontario's manufacturing sector different than it is the oil patch? Well, I think it's important that it not do that. You know, I am, I am from Western Canada, and I do understand that feeling when, when the government introduced Bill C-10 early on in this parliament that, was, that allowed Air Canada to offshore its uh, aircraft maintenance work. I was participating in that debate quite loudly and uh, forcefully because uh, people in Manitoba know what it's like to feel that uh, industries in Eastern Canada are being favoured over industries in uh, Western Canada. The NDP approach is, is to defend workers wherever they are in the uh, country. And so we do think it's important that the uh, federal government demonstrate uh, concern and take action to help people uh, who are struggling in uh, Alberta. But I, but I think that the discussion around uh, energy and how we have both an environmentally sustainable oil industry and an economically sustainable one, because this boom-bust cycle is not sustainable for uh, workers, uh, we're, we're not getting there because it's, because it's a hyper-polarized debate around pipelines, and we're not having the conversations we actually need to have. All right. Uh, well, thanks for your time and the conversation tonight, all of you, and uh, we'll talk again as we continue to follow this story. Thank you all. Thank thanks. you very thanks. much.